Hello, my name is Andy Shepherd. Uh, I'm a climate scientist. I work at the University of Leeds in the UK, but I also work closely with the European Space Agency. So weather and climate are very different things. Uh, the easy way to think about the difference between them is just time. So weather happens to us on a day-to-day -day basis and one year on, on today's date it might be snowing uh, and another year it certainly won't be. And so the things that happen on short time periods are the weather that affects us, whereas the things that happen over long time periods, longer than seasons, so maybe decades or even longer, their climate. And it's difficult to separate these effects from climate data records, whether they're collected by a thermometer on the ground or by an aircraft in the sky or by a satellite in space, unless you have a long-term record. And that's what we aim to do, have many decades worth of measurements of whatever parameter we're measuring so that we can separate out the effects of weather and climate. And it's important to be able to do that because weather is quite erratic, but also is a very large signal that changes quite significantly and often the climatic changes are much smaller. So you'll be familiar with Earth's temperature change over the past centuries, really a fraction of a degree centigrade or, or just over that. And that's a hard signal to detect when we have 20 or 30 degrees centigrade change in temperature on the planet each year. And we need long-term records to be able to do that. That's where the cryosphere helps because it changes quite rapidly even if Earth's temperature changes by only a small amount. So small changes in ocean or air temperature in the polar regions will cause ice to melt. And the easy way to separate the effects of weather and climate in the polar regions are just to think really simply about snow and ice. Snow is generally what we would consider to be weather, whereas ice is the long-term storage of snow as it compacts and, and moves through glacier systems. Um, and, and becomes part of the climate record. And if we see changes in ice on Earth today, then they tell us about changes in climate. Antarctica has told us actually a huge amount about climate change in recent decades. So what we found is that parts of the Antarctic ice sheet are flowing too quickly into the oceans because the ocean around them is too warm and that's causing them to be unstable. At times that causes ice shelves to collapse and break away from the continent and drift out into the southern ocean and at other times it causes glaciers to speed up and to move more ice out into the oceans than can be replenished by the snow that falls inland and that causes a difference in the amount of ice stored in the continent and that really is simply just a difference in sea level rise because that ice ends up in the oceans and then anybody around the planet that has a coastline or visits a coastline or depends on a coastline for parts of their lives um, is affected by that. And we're instantly affected by ice losses from Antarctica, no matter where we are around the planet. So it's really important for us to, first of all, understand how the Antarctic ice sheet is changing, but more importantly, to be able to predict how the ice sheet will change in the future so that we can plan uh, our lives around that. We've learned a huge amount about the polar regions thanks to satellites in space over the past 30 or 40 years. Some of the iconic stories that we've learned about are retreat of sea ice in the Arctic. Um, that's been progressive during the satellite era, loss of about 10% per decade. Melting of the Greenland ice sheet and in some cases extreme melting in very hot summers and acceleration of Antarctic glaciers. And we've learned about all of these things thanks to satellite measurements. People have visited these places, but it's actually really challenging to be able to monitor the polar regions in anything like the level of detail that's required for several really obvious reasons. First of all, it's a very in inhospitable part of our planet. It's cold um, almost all year round and it's dark for half of the year as well. So it's really difficult to even exist in these locations. But more importantly, they're vast, they're huge places that can't realistically be monitored uh, on the ground, on foot certainly, uh, from the air or from ships even, because they can't travel over sufficiently large distances to be able to monitor the signals of change, which are affecting huge parts of these areas. 
So we depend heavily on satellite measurements to be able to monitor in all weather conditions. Well, we've got a great deal of gratitude to the European Space Agency and other international space agencies for two things. The first one is for designing and launching missions into space. And they started that many, many decades ago. It takes typically 10 or 20 years to even get a, an idea for a satellite mission off the drawing board and into space. And it's thanks to people that were designing these sensors in the 1970s that we had records in the 1990s and that we can look back on them. But the space agency is doing more than just that. They're creating and have been for some time now fundamental climate data records of how our planet is changing from day to day, from year to year and from decade to decade. And it's only thanks to these high quality and long term records of climate change that we can put together the jigsaw puzzle of how our planet is changing. In the polar regions, it's become really, really essential to have these measurements and the long term measurements. So we rely upon these measurements more than you might think to be able to predict how sea levels will change in the future and how much more our planet will warm in the future, as well as being able to monitor the changes that are happening today.